That's not a rib. She pooed it. His final appearance. Uh, I think most people know the last time we fans saw him was WrestleMania 15. He was one of the three judges for a fight between Bart Gunn and Butterbean. And when he's introduced, Gorilla received a standing ovation. And maybe most famously in 99 is when they started to run that old attitude commercial where they would show clips of Freddie Blassie and Ernie Ladd and Pat Patterson and killer Kowalski. You've told us before here on the show, Vince's favorite commercial in the history of WWE, right? Yes. Cause it had all the legends and it, it just, it, it pulled at the heartstrings, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough to watch today. It's hard to imagine that he passed away as young as he did October 6th, 1999 in his home in Mooresville, New Jersey, only 62 years old, which is very, very young. Um, Meltzer would write Morella had been in poor health and nearly passed away more than one year ago, but made a strong recovery. His condition took a turn for the worst after a mild heart attack on September 19th, causing complications from diabetes to worsen. Those close to him noted that he went out like a man's man and that he would have been able to stay alive, being constantly hooked up to a pacemaker to regulate his heartbeat and on kidney dialysis. But rather than live out his life, being unable to leave the house as a house vegetable, as he termed it, he made the call that it was time to quote unquote, check out about 10 days before his death. He took himself off the dialysis and died a slow death. He came home on the afternoon of October 5th, largely to die in peace after being hospitalized in Philadelphia. Uh, his wife, Maureen had been with him for more than 40 years and they had three children, Sharon born in 60, Joey born in 63 and Valerie born in 66. And for whatever reason, uh, Victor Canones was listed in his obituary as well. Never officially confirmed by gorilla, but the Morella family acknowledged, uh, Victor as part of their family. And he went in the hall of fame, of course, before he passed away way back in June of 94, but his legacy is bigger than a television show or a hall of fame because he lives on in the hearts and minds of all of us who grew up with his voice. And I mean, who could forget some of the iconic calls and our favorite memories, a lot of them, he was the soundtrack for that. And you know, the irresistible force and the immovable objects and so many iconic lines. Um, you know, I hate to be that guy, but did you have a chance to say goodbye to gorilla? What was your last conversation with Gino like? I did. And, um, you know, my, I said, monsoon was there when I asked my wife to marry me, he was at my wedding, uh, he and Maureen. And I have, I have friends of mine, uh, that were also at the wedding that fell in love with Bob Morella that night because he sat next to them and made them feel like they were all just the best of friends and like they had known each other forever. Um, that's just the kind of guy he was. He, um, when I had my kids, you know, um, he just was, was a part of so many special moments in my life. And when we knew he, he did make the decision, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die, uh, or I'm not gonna stay alive and not be able to live life. Bobby, there, there were a couple times, uh, long before that Gino had lost a toe due to diabetes. And, uh, Bobby would always call him, Hey, you ate toad ape and shit like that. Just to, to keep everything light. And, uh, when, uh, probably cause last time I, I spoke to him, he was in the hospital and we said goodbye cause he knew and, uh, to To me, that was when I, you know, that that's when he was gone. When he said goodbye that day, um, he whispered it, told him I loved him, said, love me, 
take care of Steph and the kids. And he just, you know, uh, you think of the, you know, you think of the old farts and those old guys and some of them could be assholes. Never was an asshole to anybody. And I'm crying like a bitch right now. Uh, he just was so remarkable in so many ways and personified class. I don't think I ever, I don't think I ever saw him get mad and lose his temper. He had a, he had a diamond, diamond ring that said, Gino, big son of a bitch. We were at uh, Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. He went in to wash his hands and came back to the table and says, oh, shit, I left my ring and went right back and, and someone had already gotten it. And uh, he just came back to the table and like nothing happened. I would be going nuts. Uh, he just, oh, well, somebody got it. Hope they get some good money for it. Loved him. He was uh, a friend and um, just a great, great man. And I think he'll go. He'll go down as one of the most important people in in the wrestling business. He was. He was just such a huge, huge part of it in so many ways for so many years. And uh, I love him. <laughs> 